Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are once again out at Tremonia. Uh, we have done all the refueling of our lander thing. I probably should top off uh, its life support just so we have a, uh, a full complement of all the things. And I apologize for not doing that before I started uh, recording. That would have been nice. So uh, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to speed up this resource transfer thing. And then uh, we'll start the episode proper. Okay, well that took a lot less time than expected. So uh, we need to EVA Valentina and have her make the trek across the station. Uh, obviously, were this a real space station, she would just take the tube internally. But Kerbal... Connected living space makes things difficult sometimes. No big deal. Anyway, she's, uh, I don't know, who wouldn't want to go on an EVA around the moon at their space station? Grab? Oh, come, really? Nope, other way, Val. Other way. Yeah, the, uh, the grab glitch has been a thing. Most notably with Boris at Harmonia Station around Mars. We took out a solar panel. We're just going to try to avoid that by just uh, jumping straight into the hatch. Board? Board? Nope. <laughs> Board. Okay, good. She got a solid arm hold this time. Board. All right, both our crew are now on the lander. Just a quick verification of that. Crew hatch. Yes, both of them are, in fact, in the lander. We are already lined up. I did that much, at least, uh, on my own, so we don't have to deal with uh, a bunch of speddy uppy bits. Why is the station spinning? Station spinning. Undock. RCS, SAS. Pull us away. And please don't clip that solar panel on your way out the door, Val. That'd be extra awesome. Thank you. All right, we can probably turn SAS off. Let's just give this a quick bump. Make sure we get good and clear while we go uh, plot our landing approach. All right, there is uh, us. We are actually, we could probably just go ahead and go for direct... Uh, with a small inclination change to bring us down over the research center. There we go. And with a fairly sizable deorbit burn. And let's try to take that right across the crosshairs there. What's that going to do for us? 259 meters per second. Holy shnikes. Well, we got uh, lots of fuel. This thing was designed to go uh, both ways, up and down. So, hopefully, if I just unlock these two tanks... Nope, that's only 1,500. And that's the big tank in here unlocked. Alright, well, we'll uh, I'm going to leave that the little tanks locked because it's really inconvenient to fuel them again. But we'll just uh, we'll go ahead and open up all four of these. Yeah, we're we're way above our what would be nominal. And uh, there's Perseus docked at Tremonia, waiting for our return. Whenever we should uh, decide that it's time to cycle the crew, we'll probably give them their full uh, hundred plus day tour. Uh, before bringing them all back. wonder who on this crew has not planted a flag on the moon. I know Val has. And I know Laura has, because it's labeled as Laura's flag. Alright, we have uh, 1 minute and 40 some odd seconds. Uh, activate engines. Okay, we're just gonna we're just going to rush through this. No big deal. Activate, activate, activate. Let's turn SAS back on. That might aid our cause a little bit. And go ahead and... Light them up.
Good day to you, Tremonia. We'll see you again soon, man. Perseus just makes that space station seem rather insignificant, although I guess most of it is habitable space versus propellant. And there's our suborbital camera change. That node was creeping away from us, or if I'm just a terrible pilot. I don't even think I was hitting a key, to be very honest. Alright, in node we trust. should do, however, is get these solar panels into the sun. The both of them. Is, yeah, of course, means making a 90 degree shift here. Are we charging? No. Don't think we're going to be. Oh, man. At, uh... Battery charge level. Ah, oh, there we go. Now we are charging. See, I, I know it'll charge, just not very fast. Alright, we'll just shut it down there and go ahead and plot our node. Hopefully for a nice... Yeah, it looks like we're going to... Oh, come on, really? Thirty-two kilometers. That's uh, a bit high, but of course we'll probably come in low. Fifteen hundred meters per second says it'll take five minutes to burn off. So we'll take a quick save in case I screw this up and kill Val. Well, in that case, we will have just killed Val, but oh well, and uh, get ourselves underway. Wait, let's say five minutes or nine minutes. This is nine minutes and the node's in six. Oh, crud. Jolly jolly mission. Probably going to aim quite a bit above it because we are lighting these engines way, way early. Yeah, we've already... Now it says, yeah, 8 minutes, 35 seconds. Hmm. Uh, I do want to replot, because I don't know where our altitude comes in. Man, no pressure. Ah, okay, good. That looks pretty good. All right, let's aim above it. We just gotta, I don't know, we're gonna spend a lot of time in free fall. It's a good thing we've got nearly five kilometers per second here. So although we've done this about a thousand times before, we are coming in a whole lot higher than I guess what we usually do. So uh, we will be trying to make some slight changes to our approach here. Uh, namely, I'm gonna try to keep the apoapsis behind me at, uh, at all times just because uh, I would like to not spend time going up, because that's more fuel that we have to spend when we come back down, because you'll more altitude means you'll pick up more speed, and uh, the more speed you pick up due to gravity, the more you have to burn off to slow down to not hit the ground excessively. So uh, I will be trying to keep a, a close eye on that and doing most of this landing from out here in the map view. I hope you don't mind. I know it's... Not exactly the, the greatest thing to look at, but um, it is very hard to see that telemetry line. I know I've talked about that a lot before when landing supply modules or uh, other crew vessels, but um, this actually becomes the first thing, I'm sure, to do a second landing on the moon, which is kind of awesome. I guess 
a little groundbreaking, but uh, our initial burn done, we will replot our node and uh, reset since we've slowed down a whole bunch. The delta v figures change, the node needs to be moved. Uh, we can kind of reassess our situation and then light the engines back up again. We are still going to uh, pitch a little bit above it that will help walk the uh, apoapsis out in front of us um, just by a bit, but uh, that's basically to keep the uh, trajectory coming down right on top of uh, Rosalina Memorial Research Station and uh, trying to look at it from that peculiar angle on the moon is just so I can see the line and a little bit of the X. It does help me line it up uh, even if it is only just one axis. That's all we really need to operate on. So once again, replotting the node to uh, compensate for our existing burn and it looks like we're coming in pretty much on top of it we will be making a small bit of correction that does look like i overshot by just a little but we can correct for that by just burning straight down the horizon and uh trying to get this angled almost right in it does look like we need to deflect north by just a little bit and i guess i clicked too much and lost my targeting reticle but we'll try to replot on top of the station again uh, having corrected north uh, just pretty much by eyeballing it, you know, these things happen. And then we'll slowly bring that down. I will get sick of not having my targeting, targeting node and bring it right back. And uh, now we are in final descent, which means we need to uh, try to zero out as much of this uh, horizontal velocity as we can muster and uh, try to bring ourselves down straight on top of the uh, research center. I'll try to get my axis figured out here, angled in appropriately. Uh, burning straight up basically just buys us more time without killing our horizontal speed, which we'll uh, hang on to for a little while longer as we try to put that retrograde vector down right on top of uh, that targeting reticle. Make things a, a little bit easier. I think I'm starting to develop a method for this. Uh, I mean, you know, like, finally. It's only been, like, 60-some-odd moon landings, which do me absolutely no good preparing for Mars landings. We've uh, we figured out atmospheric landings are a completely different uh, bag of tricks. And it'll probably take me uh, another 400 episodes just to figure out that stuff. But now we're pretty much pulsing our uh, remaining four Asterisk 2 engines after we have to had to ditch one thanks to a uh, engineering error where somebody forgot to include a decoupler. That person has been fired. But uh, our approach looks pretty good. We're going to try to touch up a little bit of it on RCS before we uh, extend our landing legs and I will drop you back down into real time uh, for some last minute landing coverage. So here's old me. Okay, easy. Are we gonna hit those solar panels? Oh, uh, I don't. Maybe? No, we're we're okay. Slow it down. Uh oh. Now we're gonna hit the solar panels. Val. Val. Touchdown. Whew. That's a little danger close there. Yeah, that... Okay. Well, no harm, no foul, right? I'm alright with this. Fantastic. Alright, let's, uh, let's get contact here reestablished. Uh, first, let's turn RCS off. Let's turn stability control off. We don't need any of those anymore. EVA. Extend ladder. Climb out from our second story window, no big deal. Where is our connector port? Uh, we should have one on either side. We'll have to move this one first. Uh, frame rate is so much better. It is absolutely amazing. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, no, inventory. Equip. Well, well, well. 
good enough. Make sure there is, in fact, one on this side. There has to be, right? I mean, it was here when we left. Yep, there it is. And this will also help uh, make sure that we can keep these batteries charged. Link. Interesting little shimmy, but all right then. Link. Katink. Fantastic. We're all set. All right, and uh, she can get back to her comfy gravity-enabled quarters here on the moon, and uh, we can start to uh, discuss some of our future plans for not only this research station, but uh, moon and moon transit in general. So uh, I guess we'll jump over and do that. So here now in the VAB, we need to start uh, prepping for the next phase in our Earth Moon program, which basically means reducing cost and uh, upping our efficiency by using um, reusable vehicles for as many different legs of these trips as we can. Um, so here I am currently trying to build out a new docking adapter. It's basically just going to be a uh, hollow tube or a empty tube. Um, but basically we we have figured out that refueling the lander takes every drop of fuel that Tremonia Station can hold. Uh, it's basically at its capacity we'll be able to do a one-to-one -one cycle and that's uh, not very efficient all things considered. So uh, the first thing that we're going to try to flush out here is going to be a large holding tank for arizine and nitrogen tetroxide to uh, keep out at Tremonia Station so that we can refuel that lander multiple times and do uh, multiple to-from trips uh, down to the research facility and back again, uh, which is know, going to help out a whole lot. The next phase after this will be to uh, basically make an Earth-Moon uh, transit setup. So uh, I imagine we'll be starting a new uh, low Earth orbit space station soon. Um, we're going to try to iron the kinks out of the SKS shuttle so that we can use it for construction purposes and uh, starting to get plans for that together. But uh, the very first step is making sure that we have the kind of refueling capacity available to refuel whatever needs to come back from the moon to Earth or uh, back to our low Earth orbit station. And of course, being able to get our lander up and down uh, would be a good part of that. So that's our large storage tank. And considering we don't have a whole lot of docking accessibility out at Tremonia Station, we're just going to go ahead and equip this thing with a... Uh, five docking ports total, of course, one of which will be taking, putting it uh, on the station itself. So maybe we can actually eliminate those two mid-port now, because, well, depends on if we decide to make the fuel tank itself disposable and just uh, return the fuel tank and leave the docking adapter, or if we want to send it out there with its own little bottleneck thing uh, every single time. So uh, again, this is just an initial design in testing. I've kind of figured out that it's going to need a uh, a little bit of reworking, but um, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll certainly have uh, plenty of time to figure this out as uh, we've got a couple more steps along the way, but uh, just kind of a heads up on what's next for our uh, moon orbit station and our Earth-Moon transit system in general. So that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.